Hello everybody and welcome to the World Cup second round match between Foufalé and Elon. Uh, both French coaches I believe. Foufalé won the toss with his lizard men and chose to receive. Um, Elon with Necromantic. Foufalé has a win rate of 66% in Champs Ladder and qualified from the Kruger Stanley Cup. And Elon has a 60% win rate in Champs Ladder and qualified from Ligue Francaise de BB. Um, so the double that Foufalé went for was leader on the Crocs, which, yes, everyone says should take block. But by taking leader on him, allowed him to have 13 players and an apothecary, uh, 13, 12 players and an apothecary and three rerolls, whereas everyone else had to choose between the, tw the twelfth player, or the third reserve, or the apple, you know, well, no. <laughs> Ever had to choose between 11 players, 3 re-rolls and an apple, or, you know, 12 players and 3 re-rolls, or 12 players, 2 re-rolls and an apple, or whatever. They, they couldn't have all three. This has allowed him to have all three, so, uh, only finally because he's got the bribe there. So I understand why he's done it. You know, he values a reserve higher than blocks on the cr block on the crocs, which is which is fair enough. You know, um, that's certainly not wrong. Uh, I don't know why this is glitched out at the top there, but never mind. Um, so yeah, you know, so the problem is, but with his team build, kind of committed him to going leader on the crocs, whereas the other builds, they could take block on the crocs if they were playing other lizard men. But if they were playing Wood Elves, they could have taken block on a skink or whatever. So, um, Ian doing the right thing here, trying to pick off a Saurus. Problem is, if he doesn't knock it over, 93% or whatever to knock it over. What is he? I don't, I don't even know. 93. 93.75, something like that to knock it over. Um, you know, does he dodge away is the question, because now he's going to get punched. And what I would do is I would put a get an assist in, punch him, then punch him again, you know, and then get a huge foul on him. So, um, and blitz potential blitz as well. So, I would I would have absolutely, you know, made sure I uh, I got a big foul on him. I mean, I guess you could blitz in this way, and then push him to there, and then block him out for. But he could have had a, you know he could have a huge foul here. It doesn't look like that's what he's doing though. Um, yeah, hitting the hitting him instead means he's only got a blitz and, and the block. Oh, I think it'd been better to have pushed him to here, wouldn't it? Push, push chain, chain the Saurus out, and then he could have pushed him to there and got two more assists. No, one more assist. Yeah, so that, that I think that was a bit of a mistake. And now it's, this is a zero assist foul because there's a defensive one as well as an offensive one. It's a zero assist foul and he could have made it way more assists. And gets a Kaz. <laughs> Double six in the AV, ten on the injury, Kaz is in. And what a huge regen. I mean, without, like, okay, the Kaz was huge. The Kaz was incredibly lucky. Um, but isn't the regen lucky as well? Because if he had been without the block, mighty blow wolf for the whole game, wow. His chance of winning drastic go down, and now that <laughs> with that one player out, Necro just look a bit crap, don't they? You know, they've just got a strength three frenzy guy and a bunch of move four agility two guys. I don't really see how they do anything apart from try to get lucky hitting Saurus. But you see, that this is okay if you got a push, I guess, then a power because he could be safe. But you know, he doesn't want his. Doesn't want his walls to get punched, does he? So, um, yeah, this is looking like maybe it's just damage mitigation, really, for for Elm here. Just try to get in without taking any more cars. I mean, he's not going to. He's he's going to fight as hard. He's still got ten players. Still going to fight to stop the score. But he knows he's got to know himself. He's not got much chance of stopping the score. I don't really like that foul. I know he's got the reserves and he's got the bribe. I would have maybe he's even just not even used the bribe there. I would rather keep the bribe for the second half or overtime if it gets there. I know that, but that's just me, you know. I, I like to, I like to not 
give away an advantage when I get it or whatever. Or, you know, use things sparingly. Whereas in other games, you know, and I've been punished for it, you know, so it's it's absolutely not saying that I'm correct. But I would have definitely gone to it, to, at least took on to the bribe till the second half. Because it's not easy to score against lizards. <laughs> um, and I would almost give up. I wouldn't give up. But I would accept that it's going to be very, very difficult to stop the score now. You know, you've got to be realistic, haven't you? I would never give up. I mean, I did. I think I showed that in my uh, in my round two match. Um, you know, you're going to keep fighting. But you've got to realise when the odds aren't in your favour, haven't you? So this flesh is doing quite a good job of keeping a uh, three Sora stuck on him. If he just gets pushed, he's he's looking pretty good, isn't he? Uh, maybe he's trying to hit a skink. You know, they could maybe try and get around and get a blitz on a skink somehow. Not easy. But maybe that's something you could try to do. Yeah, just trying to stay behind the ball, isn't he? Which is, which is fair enough. If you keep them in front of you, you've got more chances to stop them, haven't you? So Fu Folle switching sides again. Um, it makes sense to to keep switching sides with with lizards just because you're so fast. And eventually, you can switch backwards and forwards. And eventually, you can switch. You can go down one side as well. So it's really, uh, the, you know, the movement they have is absolutely crazy. This was actually a pretty good move by Elm last turn because this strands the Saurus on a flesh goal. And now I don't like this non-stand firm here. I've kept him stood firm. Um, I guess he thought he was going to move away anyway. So it didn't really matter. Um, yeah, this is a, this is a good one here because if you want dice blocks here and pushes you, you don't stand firm. And now he's free, but so are you. Um, if he doesn't block, then you two D him down, or you just leave him one on one. So I, I quite like this. Um, I'm not sure I'd have gone for the block or not because, but you know, he does, and, and now he can get stuck by a zombie, which I think is a better trade. And then the fleshy can come in here and do something. Zombie on there and blitzing a skink. I'll, I'll probably just go for blitzing a skink. I, I really probably, I really were not blitz, blitz. Oh no, you've got, you've got a, you've got, you put claw, claw hit on a Saurus is really better than going after skinks, to be fair. Um, but you know, yeah, I think. This is actually good because it lets him keep a normal defence. The question is you've got to think of is what happens if you don't knock him over? And what happens if you knock him over on the first block? And what happens if you knock him over on the second block? So, you know, maybe you've got to take him from a different, slightly different angle. Or whatever, you know, he's only got three minutes. I'm not, I'm not saying he's wrong for this one at all. Um, but, you know, he might have, you know, there might have been something better. As it was, this was alright because he had guard either side of him, didn't he? So... And that probably was a good one. Um, quite protected on the boat down there and stuff. But it, it's interesting, isn't it? Because yeah, it wouldn't have been protected on the boat down on the second one. Would have been in trouble. So yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that. I'm not saying it was wrong. Or may, even maybe wrong, but maybe it was. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't paying too much attention to it, but. You know, it's it's worth thinking about the um, the angle in that because you really got to protect your walls. Um, and as it was, you let you let this this Saurus off the off the chain, but he gets a two him down with a fleshy next turn anyway, so that's all right, isn't it? And strand him on a zombie.
potential surf there. Not, not great odds. But it's there. You know. One, two, three, four. You'd have to basically just make your ears based. So it'd be a one dice, which you can't really do, can you? One, two, three, four, GFI, GFI. So can't really go for that. I guess you could put the fleshy in there, one dice him, move both guards around. Even that would be a GFI. So the Sir probably not worth going for. Also, he would, yeah. So what he went for was, this was, what he actually went for was the wrong play, um, in my opinion. Because this guard play could have come in here, and that could have been a two dice. And then the flesh golem could have come in there, and it would have been a two dice into a one dice. Whereas he rolled a one dice to make it a two dice into a two dice. But it's better to make the, uh, you know, if he'd done the two dice in first, then he might have never had to roll a one dice. But I didn't even like this, like, because sure he knocks down the crocs and the crocs is big and scary. And, he, you know, he is, he is 90 odd percent to knock him over. But I just didn't think it was great. He's getting punched back in return it's not doing a whole lot you know it is turn six like all i was saying i would have kind of been okay with giving up the score and not i would have accepted the fact that i probably was going to give up the score oh, that's, what, that's what i was trying to say I would never, give up. never give up never surrender um but you've got to be realistic haven't you and you've got to know when you've got a good chance and when you don't when you don't have a good chance, and uh, I would have thought I would have had a pretty low chance of stopping him there, um, as the necro. So, yeah, the the surf was a really bad idea. I think I think the surf was a bad. I think he was right not to go for the surf. Absolutely right not to go for the surf. Um, not sure he was right to go for the crocs, but I can see why he would do it. Kaz and no regen. Absolutely typical. You fail the regen on your. No, this is the opposite. Your opponents regen their werewolves and fail their zombies. <laughs> when you play, of course, you fail your werewolf regen but past the zombies. So, you know. Made two guys, one one's regen, but as far as food follow is concerned. I don't really like this. Again, so he's going for the surf, but it takes a guy out that could have gone over there. And the wolf probably doesn't get back far enough. So you know there's a time and a place to surf just because just because you can it doesn't mean you should. Um, and yeah, this 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 zombie could have marked him and the wolf could have been right over here and stuff. Cheeky one guys. This is, this is pretty rough, isn't it, now, for Fru Folly? All, all he can do is probably do, like, a, a three-man sideline cage. Two there, one there, one there. And he's going to get surfed and a lot of stuff put in front. But he can get quite far forward. So he got, only went seven there. He could have gone an extra square. Um, I really don't like this because... Gives you the chance of a surf. If if this had been one square forward and he'd been one square forward, and he was one square behind, then there'd be no surf on. If you, if you get what I mean, like the opposites of where these two are. As it is, that blitz kind of screens it all all off. So he's got a double screen, which is good. But um, I'm not sure he had to go sideline anyway. You know, he could have just had a full four man cage. He could have just not followed there and gone here and then gone there and he would have been much better options for going sideways to score as well. That's the thing, isn't it? So I think he was maybe a bit too quick to go sideline altogether there. Another one dice surf attempt from here. Yeah, still got his reroll, why not? Doesn't go for the surf though, interesting. Oh, yeah. Because he's so slow, so slow, slow, cl so close, you can actually just run back here, can't you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, GFI. 
which is looking looking the right play. We might have made two GFIs there instead of, instead of the second dodge. I'm not sure if he needed two GFIs. He did do two. He did do two GFIs. What he could have done is he could have assisted uh, with that second skate he could have two dice blitz, which might have been an option. Don't know if it'd be better. Than that. But it may have been. It may have been. You know, I just saw it there. I didn't have long to look, but uh, you know, maybe he did consider it and think it was better to just make the two GFIs. So yeah, successful drive for Fu Folle. And, and you know, this match was always going to be about does the Claw Mighty Blow Werewolf kill a bunch of Saurus? And obviously first half he was out straight away. So the answer was no. Second half, if Elm if doesn't get any removals, it's going to be really hard. You know, Saurus is just super, super strong. Lizardmen are a great team, no doubt about it. Um, and yeah, if he it looks like he's just going to set up for removals. I think, with him having guard and a flesh golem, he should have absolutely gone for the one turner here. I think this is really bad to not go for the one turner. He's got a full 11 players. Um, okay, he's only he's only movement eight with agility three, and he got the blitz anyway. But that was really should have set up for the one turner, I think. But you know, because this was a really bad one turn defense. If, if the Saurus wants further forward, it would have been better, but then they could have got frenzied in the same place. So it was just a weird, weird one-turn defense. I didn't, I didn't like the one-turn defense, but I like the one-turn attempt to score a lot less because there wasn't one. <laughs> um, and you know, yeah, he could, he could have got the three the three pushes easily enough, and then maybe he, maybe he makes it. In fact, he could have even blocked with uh, frenzy and then got the pushes that way and then had the blitz to score me with maybe that would have been but, but he gets a KO anyway. And a controversial apo there from Eel. I do not like that apo because all it's saving you is a 50-50 for a half. It's not giving you value on the drive, is it? There's absolutely zero value on the drive there. There's a good chance of this going o over time. So, you know, if, if you get a KO on turn two, it's just better, isn't it? So, yeah, I think that was a bit... Not sure about that, Apple. But, you know, it's not a criticism of Fu Fale because he's got 15 seconds to, to decide. And, you know, whether you use your Apple or not, it can be a game, a game winning or losing decision, can't it? And it does suck a bit that you only got 15 seconds for that, but obviously, there's got to be a limit on how, how long you have to decide in, in your opponent's turn, so I'm not saying it's a bad a bad call by Cyanide only giving you 15 seconds, but it can be a really tough decision to make in 15 seconds. Uh, and while I'm not going to say you made the wrong decision, I think maybe it was maybe it was a bit rash, wasn't it? Because it was only saving the 4 plus to come back, and he still had 11 players as well, he still got the reserve. So really, he used an apple to definitely upgrade a skink to a Saurus rather than having a 50-50 shot and I just think that was you know a little bit a little bit greedy unnecessary I don't know what you'd call it but um optimistic you know if he gets any KO on this drive I think he just gets way more value from that um so yeah I, I didn't like the apple I think I've gone on about it enough now, haven't I? <laughs> but you know, again, it's I know what it's like playing in the games. It, you know, it is nerve nerve wracking and everything, and pressures on and all this kind of stuff. So uh, I don't blame him for it. And he only had 15 seconds, so I think he should have. I don't know if he didn't know how to one turn or if he just thought blunt for damage was better. But I think he probably should have gone for one turn. Because you know, tight LOS and be able to blitz diagonal, didn't he use the whole method? I think that he absolutely should have gone for the one turn. It's a nice, uh, nice hit on the Souls there with Claw Mighty Claw. Free to, 
free to run back. Being a defenseless player, so he's almost certainly going to be free. He just needed double pushes, wouldn't he? And even then, double pushes, he could have made a block and maybe protected him with uh, Fleshy. See, I like the hit and run of them. You know, I think he's got to be able to keep doing that, hasn't he? He's got to be able to keep picking off, like, expose Saurus. doesn't protect, I mean he couldn't protect both, well he could have protected both of those, but he couldn't fit with both and protect both, so even going, no, Foo Valley going straight for the block on, well, Blitz on Exposed Wolf, and then just kind of screening out, I mean this kind of works because it does make Blitzing them difficult with a Wolf, and keeping these two together makes Blitzing them difficult with a Wolf, so I quite like this kind of defence actually, it does make it hard for him to hit with a Wolf. Um, he could actually do it he could have moved the zombie to here and a couple of players are there and then blitzed out that way but he's so far back you, you, if he'd been here which maybe he could and should have been then blitzing around there and coming back would have been pretty nice He's still going to try the wolf blitz here. He must have hit a skink. He can't reach, can he? I don't know what his, what his play is. Oh, that was a two dice there. Ah, right. So there and then come round. Okay. I didn't realise this, this source was down. So yeah, he had a 2D there and then blitz with a wolf. Pause. So he gets the pal. What he should have done here, I think, is push him into the flesh golem and then dodge out. He's gone three, four, five. Could have gone six, seven. Um, no, because I just don't want the wolves to get hit. I'd rather I'd rather dodge than get them get them knocked over. Um, they're fifty five percent to get knocked over on a block. Thirty percent, thirty three percent to get knocked over on a dodge. So I think hitting into the flesh golem and then dodging away is the best play there. He gets a cards. Now, okay, the apple would have only worked fifty percent of the time on that, but fifty percent of the time, if it goes to overtime, he's got an extra source. So he does get the hit back straight away. Doesn't do anything. I don't think there was any super sexy chain going on there. Possible, but that block does mean that he can blitz the other wolf, doesn't it? Well, he's got to expose the skink to do it. I would expose. I would. I would put the. I would put the skinks on the. Uh, I would have put two skinks on there and blitz the, blitz the wolf off. Just because he's just because he's such a pain, isn't he, the wolf? It's tough, isn't it? Even though he's up a player, Eon, it's still tough to to drive against Woodies. They've got so much movement as well. Even if they get out of position, you know, like they, they, you know, they pretty much overcommitted this side. There's no reason to have this much stuff over this side. But the undead can only go seven with a ball, and they can go eight with the with them and six with them. So they can totally patch this up next turn and then patch it up the next turn. No one, no one moves around as well as, as well as Lizardmen, I think, just because, I know it sounds stupid because you can base them in their agility you want, but if a, if you base a source, he just punches you. <laughs> so basing them isn't so exciting. Ooh, double skull. 
And that's the kind of double skull that you just instinctly roll because if he loses the wolf, you know, it's, it's a nightmare for him. Um, he is going to get blitzed by a crocs. I'd crocs blitz him. Or at least move the crocs in and then uh, block blitz him. But I'd probably croc blitz him for the greedy mighty blow hit. Um, yeah, it's it's funny, isn't it? Because, you know, he's only got two rerolls and there's overtime potentially. So, well, yeah, I really don't like that. I would have, I would have definitely moved the crocs in here and blitz with blitz with him. If I was going to blitz with block, if I was going to be greedy, which I probably wouldn't have done in the World Cup, it's the sort of thing I'd say when watching is move the crocs in there, and, uh, blitz with the crocs. I'd probably move the crocs in a blitz. I mean, crocs is really committed to this side here. Um, I'm not sure he needed that hard of a commitment. But, of course, he can He can just go to the side anyway next turn. So. No problem. Um, but yeah, that's. I think he. I think you know. He's just so valuable, isn't he? Basically, the wolf is so good. It's the it's the ace in the hole for uh, for Elon, isn't it? If he if he if he rolls well with that wolf, he just wins. And, uh, so I think every chance you get, like the foul, I like the foul. Well, I didn't like that the foul in the first turn was a one assist foul. I would have really tried to get, how do you know, I'd have blitzed him or blocked him in such a way as to get like three or four assists on that. Um, I think he's that important that you know, he should have done. Wow, a GFI blitz. And another one. Wow, he got, now, you know, he was about 30% he was a, well, to fail, wasn't he? There, that was, that was a bit dodgy. That was a bit dodgy double GFI blitz scheme. Because he couldn't have re-rolled it, he's got to keep his last re-roll now. You know, seeing his best case scenario for him is overtime. He absolutely has to keep his re-roll. He's put a good, good solid screen out here. But of course, lizards are strength 4 and movement 6. So they should be able to shore it up, no problem. A bit suck to have this guy stuck on the air. Uh, Zombie. Might be an idea to get a skink, put the skink in for the assist. Not that he needs an assist, but put the skink in for the assist, then block him. So that the uh, zombie would then be stuck on a ghoul. Uh, a skink, the, the, goo, the zombie can't do anything, but the skink could then run away next turn. The dodge, because, yeah, it's pretty bad getting him stuck on this zombie. I do think I'd be tempted to put, put a skink there. He's just kind of he's got he's got he's got a bit of an L screen there. It's not not a bad defense to it. Doesn't take the three plus dodge, which is fair enough. And I guess yeah, I guess if he was gonna dodge away, he'd have just stuck a stuck a zombie on him anyway. But maybe you could have kept the maybe you could have kept that skink on there and a skink on him, just a fruitlessaurus for next turn. It's an idea, isn't it? I mean that's. One of the things you've got to do with lizards, you've got to be able to free up your saurus and like, you know. When I say things, you know, most people are doing the right stuff all the time. So someone said I'm gonna say badly had see that would have been a decent apple, wouldn't it? Wouldn't have helped him stop. The thing is though, both of these apples wouldn't have helped him to win in normal time. Whereas his apple did help him to win in normal time. So that's why you absolutely can't say his apple is wrong at all. It's just it's just risk versus reward, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, a lot of people, uh, well, I'll say a lot of people, some people on my stream say that, you know, chat is too harsh on people and stuff. But, you know, I think you kind of expect people in the World Cup to be making, you know, solid, right Blood Bowl, or good Blood Bowl decisions. And whether they're ones you disagree with, that's when you say, oh, I don't know about that. If they do something you disagree with, you're like, ah, yes, I expected that. You know, so it's. I think it's natural to uh, to only pick up on cases where they do something that you wouldn't, because you would assume that they would do kind of similar things um, most of the time. <laughs> yeah, he's really feeling a bit isolated. This Saurus now, isn't he? Maybe could have swapped positions of these, I think. 
Um, I don't know, but if I could swap positions with these, I would, just so that the Saurus is guaranteed able to move. You're already exposing Sphinx to Blitzers anyway. Um, now, okay, he's got a hit, but the Saurus is stuck on stuck on him now and can't move next turn if it was a skink. Both skins could dodge it and the Saurus could be free to move. And you know, look, he, he could have seen that straight away and thought, oh, I should wish he He might not have seen it or he might have been happy with it. Um, I certainly, when I was doing the replay of my own game, saw things that I didn't see for the first time around. There's some lovely clipping there, isn't there? Actually, pretty pretty lucky stun because if he hadn't been stunned, he would have just punched him straight back with the swords, wouldn't he? I guess he's going to anyway. I guess he's going to put the skink in two dice anyway. You've got to, aren't you? Yeah, we're really, really suffering now, this this Saurus over here. Wow. And no cast. Regen, so no problem. So, you know, three cards, regen two of them. Kind of lucky to make three cards, to be fair. He's actually out of the uh, Necro here, and the Necro has got Mighty Bull Claw for some hits and Claw for some hits. And the Lizards only have Mighty Blow. One Mighty Blow, and it's unreliable. So, you know, he's actually done pretty lucky on the Kaz front. Um, just pretty unlucky that it was the uh, Werewolf that regen. And the chaos, but yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty decent in terms of removals. And, you know, you've got to expect the Necro to get more more AB breaks with that hitting armor 7 all the time, whether it's a Saurus or a. Or a yeah. right, let's, let's pause it here. Because this is an interesting turn, isn't there? This is an interesting turn. He's got, he's got four players free to move. Um. And it's just not easy, you know, he's got a guard, he could put the guard in there, and he could put the wolf in there, and he could blitz with a mighty bow, but then he's only got a screen of two and stuff, so it's interesting what he does this turn. Uh, I mean, this is kind of the obvious way to go for, I think, because it gets you further forward. Um, but I actually quite like what he did here, I, did, I didn't think of it myself. Um, but this does get the Flesh Golem into play, doesn't it? And I thought, I thought that was pretty good. Okay, he did have to GFI. <laughs> that was the bad part of it. But... Um, and yeah, I quite like that play. I really did quite like it. I was pretty safe, actually. I also like um, Fu Folle going for the dodge blitz here. Because 5 plus might work. Um, I think you're unlikely. You can blitz here and then screen a bit. Or blitz here and screen a bit. And you can dodge out the skinks and you can try to dodge him out. And you can try dodge him out in the end, but oh, he blitzes with him and bases the ball. Okay, but um, yeah, it's and then he just punches off like that. Yeah, I mean you're always going to block this. Um, I guess you don't want to dodge out with a suck with a crocs because he's got the hand off. Um, I think he definitely should dodge with a Saurus at the end here and like a GFI or two. I mean, he kind of gets in the way there, a little bit, but he could have gotten in the way more with a, uh, a Saurus dodge, which I would have liked to have seen, because this Flesh Golem isn't really a scoring threat, isn't going to really do anything. No, well, maybe he is. Maybe he is. Maybe if he fails that dodge, he stands up there, blitzes the Crocs, and then he's got a handoff to there, but you have to dodge still. So he's hoping for a knockdown on either of these blocks. Actually, he need the knockdown on this block. This knockdown doesn't, doesn't actually change anything. 
slight misplay here. Um, he dodges without using the dodge skill. He should have actually taken the push here, so he could have made another dodge, which would have been a 1 in 9 chance of failure, due to not having any rerolls. So the dodge would have been better for 1 in 9, so it would have been 1 in 6 GA5. So it was a slight misplay not taking the push there. Um, but, you know, he did get a knock over a skink, which is, which is good. And, you know, and it was natural to think, oh, no, I've got a GFI now. It was natural to take the ball down to hit the skink. So, you know, I don't, I don't think it was a, a bad play, per se. Although it, although it was. <laughs> although it was, because it was, ten, you know, that, that's the thing. In, in kind of, you know, the, the, the turn 16, 1-0 down... There really is only one optimal play, isn't it? And that is the play that gives you the most, the highest chance of scoring. So you really, you really should have taken the push there. But you know, it, it was easy to take the to take the both down. I would have taken both down, and then, and then watch the replay and be like, oh yeah, I should have taken the push. <laughs> so absolutely understandable. So it's looking like overtime. No real one turn attempt here. Which eight players? Nine players? I think when you've got movement eight. Oh no, he's, he's got sand firm, but he, yeah, so he's got a block. There is so there is one. There is a one turn attempt. Um Yeah, he's got movement eight, dodge. Stunty. So of course he's got to go for the one turn. What he should do here is. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. GFI, GFI, hand off of the ball. Should do that first. Um, that gives him the highest chance of scoring the one turn. Because Stunnings are crap at throwing. So if he pushes him forward first, this is making it a five plus pass instead of two GFIs. Um, though he will definitely be in a tackle zone. If he got pushed forward three, he wouldn't be in a tackle zone. But still, I'm sure 2-2-4 two, two, is better than 5-3. Uh, but, yeah. This should have probably been a skink. This should have been a skink going somewhere else. Maybe he just didn't have enough players. I just don't think he had enough players, did he? It was a good effort. He shouldn't have made these dodges because he, he just couldn't score at this point. So he did the right thing by not risking the GFIs uh, or the pickup, you know, and having to use a reroll on it. Because he would have had to really with three. But yeah, it turned out. I don't know, maybe he could have done it better. Um, or maybe he just needed an extra player there. But you know, he ne nearly got the pushes to get him out of range. But... So now it's just down to the coin toss to see who wins. Basically. Um, so far in this World Cup, everybody who has won the, world, who has won the toss in overtime has won the game. The only person who has won the toss and not scored a touchdown was Sage, but he won the uh, roll-off afterwards. So yeah, it's looking almost inevitable. But however, the Wolves have no re-roll. No, they got one, didn't they? They got one from that uh, from that uh, kickoff result. So if they'd had zero re-rolls, it would have been very interesting. But now the fact they've got one gives them that little bit of leeway. It's actually huge having the difference between zero and one is the biggest difference I think. Not having any safety net at all. And um, still got eleven players. Three, four, five, only nine players. Down two Saurus. So you know it's looking grim. And of course if the uh, if the Necro remove anybody. Necro get another reroll. I mean okay so did the lizards, but the lizards don't care so much. The lizards would definitely rather be at two zero than four two. Um, you know, maybe, maybe the lizards can do something. They've got skinks to maybe do something crazy. Um, but yeah, when they're when they're this heavily outbashed, and you know, it's not crazy. It's not crazy for them to have taken two cards. 
Oh, and this KO. I mean, the, the apple was using the KO after all. But yeah, you know, that's that's the thing, isn't it? He's got he's got the wolves, and wolves sure do like punching Saurus. Um, it's probably one of the favourite things they have to punch, isn't it? It's just you know maybe you should have put guys behind so he couldn't get the uh, frenzy hits off and stuff so easily. But yeah, that's a nitpick, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be nasty to anyone here. Critical eyes is for the benefit of, of viewers and stuff rather than criticism of players, coaches. I like I, I like not not caging behind the LOS. I think a lot of people would have gone into this cage here and then just got based by Crocs. Um, so I like I like the screen in front of the screen. Absolutely love these lizards. So you know he is giving hits on the walls all the time. You know he is he has never been shy. Elm has never been shy of giving hits on the walls. And when I play Necro, I protect. You know I really go crazy protecting my walls, and then they get blocked once and get KO'd. But <laughs> I do my absolute best to stop them getting blocked. Um, you know to the point of not hitting with them if they're going to get blocked and everything. But yeah, with two rerolls, that makes this pretty safe, doesn't it? You can keep trying to snipe, snipe targets with the uh, the mighty blow wolf. I think this is maybe a bit unnecessarily close, especially this is a, a three into a two. Can't find the knockdown. Probably wants to put even more men in the in the corner here. Yeah. Yeah, I think he got himself into a bit of a pickle committing the ball carrier to make the first block of 3D. I mean, he wants to conserve rerolls, absolutely. Yeah, putting him in there. I, I don't hate that, but I, I would also not hate it just basing the crocs, you know, just keeping the hell away from the cage. <laughs> I wouldn't have minded just sticking a zombie on the crocs and hoping he didn't die for a few turns before he can get forward. Instead, no, oh, the Crox isn't in. A bit surprising, isn't it? I would have thought maybe put the Crox in here. Follow there and put the Crox in. I know because then he could have chained him away anyway. With a blitz there. Ah, it's all swings and arrows in here. You know, he's doing his best to defend. And I guess having the crocs free to move is good, isn't it? So he doesn't want him stuck. So now, if, if you know, having the crocs as a safety means, if uh, if he'll makes a break for it, he can respond by basing him, blitzing him with crocs. So yeah, I, I don't hate. Like I wasn't saying that I hated not basing him there, but it was an option, wasn't it? Mighty blow hit on a skink, nothing. Just kill the skinks is what Reddit says. Um, for how to beat lizard men, which is one of the funnier advices you see there out, out on the internet, is just kill the skinks. If it was that easy to kill them with every block, um, lizard men wouldn't have the highest win rate in like every format, <laughs> like they do. So uh, yeah, I like sticking the uh, two zombies on two saurs. That's a brilliant trade, isn't it? It's absolutely huge there that he's got these two Saurus stuck. You could even think about blitzing with the crocs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just to power chain and get the, the two Saurus over there. I wouldn't, wouldn't even hate that. Though, of course, had I done that, I would have, I would have double, <laughs> double schooled and it would have been an absolute disaster. Also a follow there, so that he could have blocked this one to free him next time. I think he should have followed there for sure. But you know, it's, it's... oh three dice on the on the super wolf. Fair enough. That's a very tempting blitz, isn't it? I'm definitely not going to say that's a wrong move. 
Kills him. <laughs> so, regen doesn't matter at this point, does it? Because it's, it's in overtime, but the death is funny. And, ooh, I don't like that. I think he should have... I think he should have dodged out of there. I think that's where... I, but in, uh, so... I think what, what, what he probably should have done was this skink should have been here. And then that skink that just dodged out over there should have come back to here. Because I think you've got to stop the, the run down the sideline because it's so hard to catch them. And also the break down the centre isn't so bad. So I think you should have followed there. This skink back here and then that skink to there. Um, would have made his defence a lot a lot better. But as it is, he's, he's opened up the... Uh, he has protected the middle a bit by having him here and getting that knocked down. But he has exposed the, the side a bit. And that is that is indeed where he pushes, so Yeah, you know I'm not I'm not going to have to say it's a mistake. No, it is. <laughs> I really want to, you know, I can't, you know, someone saying I've apologised a million times this World Cup, but it's not really apologising, I'm just making it clear that I'm not really having a go at everyone, you know, I'm really not having a go at people, um, but yeah, obviously sticking the zombie on him now is great, because he's not pushing the and fails the one in nine dodge, and that is almost certainly all she wrote. Could have made them marginally safer. Um, two dice splits with the ghoul, uh, with the ghoul, the white, and then run up and then make that three dice blocks would have made been marginally safer, I believe. But well done, when well done, eel. Um, you know, he, he probably well, he definitely got lucky because he won the coin toss in overtime. <laughs> you know, um, on the on the. AV breaks, he was luckier, but then he did have Claw, so he's only trying to break Armour 7 instead of, you know, well, sometimes he's trying to break Armour 7. And, you know, so it's it's not it's not that clear that he was that lucky with a 15-hour race with having the Mighty Blow Claw and the other Claw. It's not, it's still a lot, though, isn't it? And he, the, the important thing is winning the toss in overtime, so, you know, I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it, but I think... You know, almost every, well, every time the person who won the toss in overtime has won the game. And as I say, it was only, it was only, it was only Vincenzo that successfully defends it, def defended it. But then he lost the roll off. So, you know, that is probably the biggest bit of luck, isn't it? Winning the, winning the coin toss in overtime. But, you know, he still played well and other people would have maybe lost if they'd played, you know. If they hadn't played as well, you know, other people wouldn't have played as well and not won that game. So, you know, all these times when, like, the luckier coach won, it doesn't mean just because they were luckier. It means because they're also good at really good at Blood Bowl. If you've got two people who are really good at Blood Bowl, chances are the one who's a little bit luckier is going to be the one who wins. <laughs> if one's rubbish and one's good, then you can win with bad luck. But, um, yeah, you know, well, well done to both of them. And uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.